Hello, I'm Russ Etheridge, a freelance animator based in the UK. In this video, I'm going to be covering my process for a bike animation I made recently. This is actually a bonus video that goes along with the bike rigging class that I did over on Skillshare recently. So if you're interested in learning how to rig something like this, then you can go and check it out over there. This will be more of a time lapse with commentary on top. It's not really an animation tutorial. I will be doing some animation classes coming up, so make sure if you want to take those classes that you're following me over on Skillshare. Without further ado, let's take a quick look at how I approach this animation. Okay, so I've got the time lapse up here, so we can scrub through it like this. And if we want to look at anything in more detail in terms of the final animation, I've got Cinema 4D here as well which I hope maybe you can tell the difference or not, but it's kind of the same view, unfortunately. I'm afraid this is what it's like looking at animation, screens of people's computers. So we've got the uh, fine animation here that I can scrub through. So yeah, it's a bit of an experiment. I hope this works. I'm just gonna kind of talk over the time-lapse um, as it's happening. Um, so I'll set it off. And the first thing I start doing is actually the cog animation. So you can see here that I'm making the curves uh, just to get the feet spinning around in, on the cog. And it's not a linear movement, it's kind of like it goes fast and slow and fast and slow because it's way more natural doing that. And I'll probably say as well at the beginning here, I'm, I'm just getting a, a cycling loop going. So that's the first thing, even though the final animation is not a loop, it's actually like the character sort of it is a loop, but the character cycles a bit and then he does, he swerves around some puddles and then he carries on cycling. But the first thing I'm doing right here is uh, making the character cycle continuously on the spot. By the looks of it, the next thing I'm doing is making the bike do sort of rock backwards and forwards like this and I'm also making the body rock backwards and forwards because you tend, you tend to shift your weight left and right as you cycle so I've got the feet going and now I'm getting the body going you can see adding a bit of twist in the body makes it look a lot more natural so I think this part of the animation actually was quite quick it's very easy and quite satisfying to just get us get a loop going a cycle loop just giving it a render here I can probably show a uh, finished cycle loop here if I can if I've got it somewhere When you're doing a cycle loop, it's you can just keep adding detail, just depending on how much detail you want to do. You can sort of add little head bobs. I think I add the nose bobbing up and down because I rigged the nose. Any kind of little extra movement like left and right, shifting the weight left and right, and the head following through is just going to add to that fluidity of the uh, cycle. I think I even added the hands very slightly moving left and right, just so it looks like he's kind of balancing, because if they were rock solid, it would look like that part of the bike wasn't actually movable. Um, so I'm just uh, doing some rendering stuff here, making the render look a bit nicer before doing that render loop. Uh, now I'm adding in the puddles because I'm starting to work on the um, actual swerve part of the animation. I think the swerve part of the animation was a lot more difficult. This was the, where I spent most of the time on because it's a bit more complicated. Like a cycle loop is quite easy, it's straightforward and I've done plenty of them before. But the actual swerving, I don't think I've done a 3D swerving bike before so I had to sort of work that out. Because if you see in the middle here, the bike rotates around this spot. So when the bike, so when the bike wheel turns, obviously um, it's not physically attached to the ground like a physical bike would be. If I show you in the final animation, it's actually turning around one point. So I have to turn the handlebars, I have to get the character to turn its handlebars, to turn the handlebars on the bike, and then animate the curve of the bike, as in like turning the whole object curving around a corner. I have to make that and the, hand, the, the handlebars turning look like it's one natural movement but in fact it's not. So that was probably the most challenging part of this whole animation is actually getting that, if I turn the bike here, getting this rotation to look right, to make sure, because obviously I can turn it however I want, and if it, obviously when I'm turning him on the spot, it just slips, So, but in animation you kind of have to fake it. So getting that turning right and making it look correct with the handlebars turning, deceptively difficult, <laughs> that's what I say, it's very deceptively difficult. That was probably the most challenging bit, followed by getting the character's center of balance correct as well, so like shifting the weight with the bike underneath. I think eventually I, um, so I've got the left and right movement going here, so you can see what I'm doing. These curves are, I think are the left and right movement, that's like the main 
turn like the main rotation of the bike oh yeah if i pause it here you can see how i'm actually doing it doing because i was finding it difficult i think at first i started i tried to do it freehand so just like estimating how the bike should be looking by looking at the animation eventually i just went above and i drew a, a reference spline so you can see this spline here this is this is the course that i wanted the bike to take i think some people might be tempted to attach objects to splines but in my experience, you know, it's actually more difficult doing that because you, you're compl you're just taking away your freedom of movement. So if, if splines are really useful so that you can just draw the movement out, but I would say, you know, you've got your curves in here. These are splines, your animation curves are splines. So don't constrain your object to a spline, just sort of maybe use it as a reference and animate using the animation curves. Oh yeah, it's also worth saying that I don't, the way I ended up doing this is the environment moves and the bike stays riding on the spot. That's why you can see that these animation curves are actually just moving left and right. The bike is stationary and the environment is moving towards the character. I mean, in certain situations, this is a good idea. I found it much easier like that in, when I was animating this bike, just because, you know, the bike is not zipping past the camera. You're not having to animate the camera to match the character's speed and all, all this kind of stuff. It makes things much simpler. So then I have just one keyframe with the environment moving. And the character is basically in a plain environment with some stuff moving along. For me, in my head, it makes it a little bit simpler. I don't know. Maybe it would have been more easier doing it the, like the more real way, where the character is actually moving. But I didn't do it like that. I did it like this. <laughs> so I guess it was a bit of a workaround. It turned out fine in the end. So it, it, it was actually pretty easy to animate. But yeah, so I'm just getting this curve right now. So he curves around uh, two, he swerves around two puddles. And then in the last puddle, he goes through it and I've got this splash. So I'm just constantly tweaking, lifting the character off the bike, making sure that the center of weight looks correct because the actual bike is turning. So I think, oh yeah, I'm doing a test here. Oh yeah, I go in and I'm fixing some of the uh, weighting issues on the character. This is what I'm saying in, if you followed my rigging class that on the, uh, during the animation phase, your character goes into poses that you're not expecting when you're rigging the character. So it's quite good after animation to go back into your waiting and make sure that the waiting looks all good for that particular animated move. So you can see here I'm animating some splashes. Also Cinema 4D tends to slow down when you've got a lot of stuff going on in the scene, it tends, the actual viewport tends to slow down. No matter how fast my computer has been, it's always been a problem. So I tend to just render previews. You can render uh, the viewport window as one of the render options in Cinema 4D. It's really useful for previewing your animation. And this point, I'm making bike tire compress a little bit on the ground so it looks like there's weight pushing down the tire. I have no idea if that is <laughs> at all readable in the fine animation, but I had a bit of time on this. I had a bit of an extra time, so I just added that sort of um, squashed tire look in as well. You'd definitely see it if you were closer to the tires, but I think from the angle and the fine animation, you probably don't really see it. Yeah, I think this splash here as well, this final splash that I made, I'm not a big fan of it. I like, I like the drips. I think those drips look good, but the actual, this splash object, which you see here, if I, it's clearer to see on this view. So there's like these two things that go up either side of the bike. Like it, it looks all right, but you can see that there's actually no end to the animation. So if you saw the entire splash on camera, I would have to have done it in a different way because I have no idea how that would end. It would have to just sort of go back down into the puddle somehow. I think it would have been better if it was a bit more of a natural shape, if this was all one shape somehow. So that it looked like an actual splash, but I didn't want to spend too long on it because it zips past really quickly and I don't think you really notice it. So I think by this point I've finished the animation and um, I'm just going through and putting in some more scenery. So some shrubs and some grass and some rocks. Quite soon after I'll do the final render for the final thing. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Let me hide this. We can go back to our normal animation, just see it from a different view. A little bit more of a breakdown view for you, you can see exactly what's going on. So you can see that the environment is not really moving. Sorry, the, the bike's not moving, but the environment is. So you can see the environment moving along and the character swerving around. I think the main thing that's not realistic about this is that the because the environment's moving at a constant speed and the character's going around corners, like really the character is moving faster through these corners than maybe he should be. So that was the main drawback about using this method is that it's really difficult to change that speed, whereas if I was animating the, you can see when the bike shifts along here, it's probably not looking correct. You can see that the back tire is sort of skidding along the ground. But from this angle, you don't really notice it, especially with like a plain uh, 
environment you just don't notice that bit like bit of forced perspective and kind of looks correct makes certain aspects of animation a bit easier but then makes other things a bit more difficult so but yeah overall i'm pretty happy with it and uh it's a really nice rig to animate I would definitely recommend checking out my class if you haven't already and rigging one of these for yourself. It's very satisfying. I'm particularly happy with the chain setup. There's actually one lesson dedicated uh, entirely to this part of the rig where we get the chain moving uh, and attaching the feet. So it's really satisfying to be able to just turn this cog, feet going around like this and uh, the chain moving and stuff. Uh, and it's all driven off the rotation of one null, which is really quite fun to play with. So yeah, go and check out the class and um, yeah, I hope you found this informative. I'll be doing an animation tutorial at some point. I know this is not maybe a full animation tutorial, but at least it gives you an idea of the way I animate when I'm actually animating. Yeah, a bit of a behind the scenes view, so I hope you enjoyed it. Amazing, so I hope you found that interesting. Like I mentioned at the start, this is a bonus video that goes along with the bike rigging class over on Skillshare. I've recently done uh, character modeling and rigging as well. So if you're interested in learning any of that stuff, you can follow the link which is in the description, which will give you a 14 day free trial to Skillshare Premium. There's gonna be at least one more video on here which I'll post that's attached to the rigging classes, but there's a bunch more animation related content coming up along the way. So if you're interested to see any of that, then please hit subscribe. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next one.